Hello, today we will be discussing the book Ruby Red. It was a really good book. I read it in five days. I actually read it over Christmas because school has been so crazy the last few weeks. I'm finally getting to talk about this. I read the sample of it on my Kindle because that's what I do. If I feel like I want to read a book but I'm not sure if I'm going to like it, I usually get the sample on the Kindle and then if I find I really like this book, I go out and buy it. So anyways, this was a Christmas gift. I read it. So then I drive up to Barnes and Nobles and they don't have the second one. So I pre-order it. And they don't get the hardcover, instead they get the paperback. So now I have these two covers. And it's like, I like them, but I don't like them as much as the hardcover version. Then I go on Amazon later and order the third book, which came in hardcover. Which I wanted the hardcover, but it's like... The series just don't look like they belong because they're two different covers. So let's talk about Gwen. I really like the character Gwen. She was just so relatable, just the way she thought and everything. How she brought her cell phone to take pictures to show her best friend. I would totally do that if I could time travel. She was just so relatable and she was down to earth. I laughed because every time she had to remember that online password, Guinea had to keep telling her, she's like, wait, what is it? And she'd come up with things that sounded like it but wasn't like, I would totally do that. She just keeps hearing it over and over but just she can't remember it. So at the beginning of the book, Gwen's great aunt Maddie has this vision and so she sees this vision of Gwen but no one knows what this means yet. I could kind of figure out what it meant because first of all there's a clock tower so time travel but also because 12 units on the clock so that would mean like the 12 time travelers and then the raven. That usually represents evil in a way, so I don't know if that had anything to do with it. And then height, maybe danger or something. Cause I really hope Gideon ends up being a nicer person than he is. Because I feel like he is going to be one of those people that is actually really nice once you get to know them. But aside from that, that when they travel to go see the Count St. German and then they're on that carriage and it happens they're on the wrong road because apparently someone told the carriage driver to go somewhere else and its assassins come out and they're sword fighting and Gwen just picks up the sword and she is just like fighting she has no idea how to use it knowing she has to save Gideon. So Charlotte, Gwen's cousin, has been prepared her whole life for time travel because it's believed she's gonna have the gene with birthdays and everything. It turns out Gwen now has a gene so Charlotte's pretty ticked off about this because she basically spent her whole life preparing and I can't help but wonder how disappointing that must be to know you can be the one going time and you spend your whole life preparing like you don't even go to the movies with your friends because you're too busy doing fencing lessons or something and then to turn around and see that your cousin has a gene and that she can try and travel well, you can't if I'm Charlotte I feel like I wasted all my time and Charlotte's one of those people who I call them the King Midas is that whatever they do they do good in. In the prologue we start out in the year 1912. First I was thinking this was Gwen and Gideon but then as I read on in the prologue I talk about oh we had to leave her there it's the best choice so now I'm starting to think is this Gwen's parents in a way. From thinking that it's crazy why but I thought well maybe because something was a better life or something but then it finds out it is her parents and that they stole the original chronograph, the time traveling machine. So now Gwen Gideon have to go back in time and get people's time travel as a sample of their blood. So the circle can be united and they unlock the secret. I'm thinking immorally, but I'm not sure. So Lucy and Paul stole the original time machine. Now Gwen Gideon had to go back in time and get the other people who have died before the, their blood. Well now Lucy and Paul are also going back time tell them don't give them your blood because they're going to use a secret for wrong reasons and so I'm starting to think who is the bad person here because you kind of wonder is there going to be some plot twist where ends up Lucy and Paul or really are the bad person they don't care about anyone else there oh Count St. German a wonderful person as he chokes Gwen and so Gwen does not tell Gideon this which I can see why because she probably doesn't want Gideon to think she can't handle this but Count is not that nice of a person so it's easy to believe that you should not trust anyone involved in the time traveling business. Gwen is in a hard place. She can't trust 
anyone. So she's not sure if she's doing good or she's doing bad or what she should even be doing at all because many people have told her you should not trust anyone. So now Gwen is trying to decide who and who can I not trust because I want to trust Gideon but they tell me I can so she's kind of caught in between of what to not what not to believe. This is a crazy idea but I can't help but think maybe the guy from Transylvania is a vampire because if time traveling can exist why not vampires? I can't help but think if Lucy and Paul were to come back to the present for some strange odd reason would they burn the age that they should have been in the present time or would they stay the age where they left in the time travel because they've been traveling time so I'm like how much do they age during that because yet they are getting older or are they not because they're in a different kind of dimension and I kind of wondered if Lucy and Paul were to come back would they turn the age that they should be or would they stay the age they are? When Gwen is meeting the Count St. German, she hears that he can read minds, so she's like freaking out because she doesn't want him to know what she's thinking. It kind of creeps her out a little bit, so she starts singing the national anthem. Like, he'll make a comment and she'll think something, she'll go back to singing the national anthem in her head because she's like, I don't want them to know what I'm thinking and everything. It was so funny how she was doing that, though. So, in the last scene of the book, Gideon kisses Gwen, and I'm really hoping this is isn't gonna be one of the things where he was just using her so he felt by kissing her it kind of make her like him so she can trust him more because I feel like Gideon's gonna be one of those people at the end that's gonna like backstab her and be like yeah I was only pretending to like you so you would cooperate or your ideas are all over but the Count can control mine so Gwen realizes that the Count is controlling Gideon's mind so is that what Lucy and Paul meant when they said they are brainwashing you was it because the Count can control minds and Gideon has met the Count a few times. So when Gwen first travels back in time she don't tell anyone because she's kind of scared no one's gonna believe her so she kind of keeps it to herself until it happens when she's at school and her best friend tell her you really need to tell your mother so she tells her mother and so then they go to where Charlotte and the other family are. There's just this big argument because they don't believe them. And finally, Gwen travels in time again. And it's true that Gwen has this gene. And so Charlotte's kind of mad. But Gwen doesn't want this in a way. Charlotte wants this, but Gwen doesn't. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this. Feel free to comment and share your opinions on what you thought of the book. Um, I hope you all have a nice day. Bye. <laughs>